and welcome to the Studio Q Show. My name is Quinn Jacobson, and this is probably the first official video of this series. The, the last one, the introduction, was just kind of explaining what I plan to do. And this one, we're going to actually delve into uh, some of the chemistry and science and methodologies and techniques and all of the stuff that makes this process work and work well, actually. I decided after um, several comments and questions on the uh, YouTube account here that there was enough interest in and general questions are surrounding silver nitrate uh, bath maintenance and preparation and those kinds of things. I thought it would be a good place to start um, with some basic um, overview, uh, basic overview and some instruction on how I maintain my silver bath and what I do and uh, how, what that looks like and, and, and the results of it. So what I've done to expedite this is I've uh, put, what, six liters, I guess, or uh, six, seven, eight liters, I'm sorry, eight liters out in the sun uh, here in Denver uh, for probably about four or five hours. And you can see here, um, it's just basic, a basic setup, plastic and glass bottles. I uncap them, put them out in the sun and leave them there. Now, I have a large glass cookie jar, big one, probably holds, I'm going to say, six liters. Um, I could dump, them, dump it all in there, put it out and cover it with some cheesecloth or a rag or something, rubber band it so stuff doesn't fall in because it's a wide opening. And I could put that out there, let it aerate and sun for a few hours, same thing. But sometimes if, you know, if I'm doing just a small quantity like this, it's, it's just easier to do it in the bottles. You can do it either way. It doesn't really matter. The bottles are fine. I know a lot of people use uh, plastic and dark amber bottles. I don't. I use the clear um, chemistry bottles here, the one liter. These are shot um, bottles that I got in the Netherlands. And I've used them for years and they're great. But after they're sunned, you can see all that stuff in the bottom flipping up. And that's all the organic material that's actually been hit, struck by light, basically turned into silver or printed out if you will and dropped to the bottom and that's what you want to clean out and uh, rejuvenate your bath and check your specific gravity and all that good stuff so we're, we're going to look at all that today to show you how how I do it um, <clears throat> we're also going to make a liter of fresh silver bath which is not really a big deal but I wanted to show you uh, how what I do how I go through it and what that looks like so let's start with the, the basics. We've sunned the, the silver nitrate and or put it under UV. And there's been a big kind of, uh, um, how do I put this, uh, interest and concern over boiling silver baths. I've never encouraged anyone to do that. I know it was popular during the 19th century and a lot of uh, folks back then did that. But um, it's it can be very dangerous. and having taught and, and I teach so much that I try to avoid the really um, questionable areas and even KCN sometimes, potassium cyanide, I'm a little hesitant on recommending to, to some people. But the boiling the silver bath, I know the weather can be really tough in the winter in certain parts of the world and there's not a lot of sun and I get all that. But the, the, form, uh, the formation of silver fulminate is, is real, and it doesn't take a lot to, for that to happen. And it's just too sketchy for me. So I, I don't do that. The sun works fine. Um, if you don't like my images, I guess maybe you want to boil your silver nitrate. But my images turn out fine with just the, the sun. And I'm fortunate to live in a place where there's a lot of sun. But So I know there's, there's been a lot of the question, and I've tried to post reasonably so. Um, information about that. It's your decision if you want to boil or not. I would uh, strongly recommend against it unless you have to, I guess. I don't know, but I'm not recommending that just for a, a professional disclaimer there, if you will. So, having said that, everything's sunned in the uh, UV or under a bank of UV lights. That's the other alternative. Just get a bank of UV lights, black light bulbs, um, build you a bank, you can use them to print out with and everything else. So it's a, it's a good investment that way. Um, so everything's sun, everything's good. It's been aerated. Uh, not only is it sunning, but also aeration. This is, this, the bath, this is one, one liter bath. Um, 
The basket in the silver bath tank, put, you drop your plate in, uh, freshly covered with collodion. The collodion is loaded with ether and alcohol. Obviously, it goes in and it's going to put solvents in here. It's going to put ether and alcohol. And if you can smell ether or alcohol in your bath, you know it's it's probably it probably needs to be aerated and sun. Um, and especially if you're if you start having problems with your plates, you you need to sun it. What happens is not only are you introducing those solvents, um, alcohol and ether, but you're also introducing a lot of organic material. Everything off the plate, everything off the plate holder. So each plate that goes in comes out, cap comes off, stuff falls in. If you're outdoors, it's even worse, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You get a lot of junk in there. The chemical process as well, too, changing um, iodides, bromides to silver iodide and silver bromide, that transformation leaves stuff in there, too. Nitrates and all kinds of, all kinds of chemical uh, compounds. And sunning doesn't get rid of everything, but it gets rid of enough that uh, you can maintain uh, good image quality if you're, if you're, if you're uh, you know, vigilant and you have to have a lot of tenacity and you have to have uh, patience and you have to be uh, kind of um, obsessive in a, in a way, if you will. So, um, so aeration, UV light, all that material that's, that's gotten into your bath will basically print out, for the lack of a better word, any organic material, print out, fall to the bottom and appear as uh, black stuff. When, you, when we filter this, you'll see what I mean. And then aeration to, to get rid of the salts or the solvents, the alcohol and ether. What you want to have when you're doing your bath, either making a fresh bath or maintaining older baths, you want um, a set of scales here. These are the OHAS 200. I've had the, this uh, scale for years. Works great. Uh, silver nitrate. You want some silver nitrate on hand. Straightforward there. A graduate that's dedicated to silver bath. Specific gravity um, the hydrometer to, to measure specific gravity. And you can get those at you know beer alcohol store. Rubber gloves, paper towels, and a variety of cotton balls, cotton pads. These are my favorite. You'll see why. And or coffee filters. Um, and of course, distilled water. A lot of distilled water. So that's kind of what you need. I have this little stand here. This is um, this is what I use to gild daguerreotypes on. It's just a, a, a chemical stand, but it works great. Kind of hands-free. Put a pad in there, fill the funnel up. You get bigger funnels if you want to, and it kind of alleviate, um, kind of does away with and mitigates some of the issue of keeping the funnel in your bottle and stuff like that. You can actually lower this right down into the bottle too if you want so there's no way you're gonna have any problems with it that way so right there like that and a measuring cup so you can uh, weigh out your silver nitrate that's pretty much what you need and um, I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna start with uh, making um, a liter of silver because I need to make some up here so I'm gonna put my gloves on Hope you can see this board here. This is what we're going to go over today in this podcast. Sun UV, several hours. Filter, which you'll see in a second here. Clean the bottles. I'll show you how to do that. Check pH and specific gravity. I'll show you how to do that. But the first thing is you want to do is you want to don your gloves. Put your gloves on. Uh, silver nitrate is a wonderful antibiotic, and, but it stains your hands. And if it gets in your eyes, it can blind you. So um, if you don't want stains on your hands and you don't want blindness, um, you can even wear goggles if you'd like. Um, I'd probably recommend that, actually. Um, I've done this enough. I'm going to risk it and say that I'm good to go without wearing the goggles. So I'm going to turn my scale on here. I have my cup on zeroed out. So uh, zero grams right now. And what I want to do is I want to pour 90 grams of silver nitrate in here. There we go. 90 grams. Doesn't take much. This is a, this is a metal, so um, visuals are deceiving. That's 90 grams of silver nitrate right there. It doesn't, not a lot. Turn my scale off. I'll put that to the side for right now. What I've done is I've cleaned out the funnel. 
This is a dedicated funnel only for silver nitrate filtering. I've put, I've cleaned this bottle and I put um, about 200 or 100 mils of distilled water in there. And to make my life easy, I line that up, throw that in there like that, take my distilled water, and I'll go, I'll do about half of it, 500 mils or so. Now, there's been a, some questions about um, having, having um, your silver nitrate turn funky colors when you put the distilled water in. That shouldn't happen. Blue milky color, that should never happen. That means your, your distilled water is probably um, not pure or clean. Uh, it's not really distilled water. It has minerals or some type of organic material in it that will contaminate the silver nitrate interacts with any organic material and in this state it will go kind of a milky blue strange color. There's a video on um, maybe I'll uh, sup put a supplement in here and I'll show you maybe I can cut into that in the video or I'll give you the link to it. You can see where I do the little test where I add tap water and uh, end up with really milky contaminated silver bath. I want to show you this is along the lines of how silver nitrate is contaminated. You saw me just uh, maintain, make this and maintain this. This is one of my working baths that I cleaned the bottle and filtered. And this is our new bath, new bath that we just made. Um, I wanted to talk to you about how these baths become contaminated. This is pure um, silver bath here. If I were to pour a little bit of distilled water in here, it does absolutely nothing, right? I mean, it thins it out, but it does nothing. It's perfectly fine. A couple of bubbles, I guess. But Now, what happens when you use dirty water or you use uh, any, any kind of contaminant gets into the silver nitrate, um, what happens is this. That's tap water. That's German tap water from our faucet. See how it turns cloudy and nasty? And the more I do that, the more cloudy and weird it will get. Why is that? Well, because that contains calcium, contains um, minerals and deposits, and that's it's reacting with the silver nitrate. What I'm going to do with this, and we'll come back to this later, what I'm going to do with this, if your bath happens, and it doesn't have to be tap water, it can be anything. If your bath becomes contaminated, never ever throw silver nitrate away. I'm going to put this out in the sun for, depends, it's winter time, but depends on how many hours, um, depends on how strong the UV is. Put it out in the sun or put it under a UV source. If you, if you have a UV light, you can do this as well. And all this material is going to react with the silver nitrate from, because of the exposure to the UV, just like a photograph, and fall to the bottom, and it'll be black. It'll basically react, fall to the bottom, and then we can filter that off, and that will be a good silver bath. This has been sitting in the sun for about four or five hours, and as you can see, the material reacted um, with the silver in the beginning, and then it reacted with the UV light, and basically, uh, you know, developed out, if you will, and dropped to the bottom. As you can see here, black on the bottom. That's all the organic material. The silver or the water at the top is good. Um, you can either decant this or filter it off or siphon it off and check your acidity and your specific gravity and you're good to go. Same thing with using baking soda or doing the full uh, neutralizing the bath and reacidifying and bringing the silver bath back up to working condition. So, so there's our fresh silver bath. I'm going to make sure um, our specific gravity and our pH and all that good stuff. Oh, we need pH strips too. That's one thing that I forgot to put out here. Let me grab those real quick. I'll check the specific gravity of it first. What is specific gravity? It's pretty straightforward. It's um, It tells you what the 
pure wa uh, water at 68 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius. As you float this hydrometer in water, if it's just water, nothing else, around 68 or 20 degrees Fahrenheit, that red band at the top there, that's where your level will be. But if you have something in the water, like alcohol or sugar or, or silver nitrate, it'll tell you what percentage or what bound. Um, it doesn't really matter if you know the bound or the percentage, if you have a hydrometer that doesn't have a percentage reading on it. It doesn't matter. Float it, check it. This happens to be, um, I have percentage on here. And so I am right at, by putting that ni nine, 90 grams in there, I'm at 9% exactly right here. So that's perfect. Let me grab the pH strips. One thing I forgot to tell you that you need pH strips. These are wide pH strips, meaning they go one through 14, or zero through 14, I should say. Zero being maybe sulfuric acid or nitric acid, and 14 being like what, limestone or calcium carbonate or something like that. So here's 14, here's zero. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in there and sometimes, you know, it depends. Here's another topic that just came up last week, too, about silver baths. Um, there was a problem with um, the pH strips. They were giving a funky reading. Um, I pursued it with the manufacturer as well, and I know that the user did, too. Now, we haven't really heard back on that yet, but um, it's interesting how um, the, the reading he was getting on his strips was so radically off. It w wasn't even funny. I'm usually around a four. So you can leave that in there for up to five minutes, really. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say we're at exactly four. Um, I know it's really kind of hard to see this. I know it's very hard to see. You won't be able to really see it, but we're at a four right there. That's pH four, parts of hydrogen or power of hydrogen four. That's good. That's kind of where my baths always are when I first mix them. So that's pH, that specific gravity. Um, a positive bath, making positive images, they generally like um, a more acidic bath. Theoretically, you could actually add a couple of drops of nitric acid in here if you wanted, or, um, you know, uh, I, I, I wouldn't use uh, um, glacial acidic acid. I know a lot of people do, but I'd only use nitric acid in this. That's what it's made with, and that's what I'd uh, maintain it with. If you needed to uh, lower the pH, bring it down to, you know, two or three or whatever you might want, um, I wouldn't use glacial acidic acid, I'd use nitric acid. So that's the, um, that's the uh, fresh batch or fresh leader made of silver nitrate. So we're gonna cut away for just a second and I'm gonna set up and have uh, the maintenance on the existing baths. Uh, that's all you really do, you put it back in the bottle. Now, this bath isn't actually isn't completely ready to use yet. Since it's fresh, I'm gonna have to Pour it in my, pour it in my uh, silver bath holder, pour a plate, let it sit in there for a few hours to iodize or excite the bath. And if you have my book, you can read in chapter 10. I have my book right here. My, it says Quinn's copy on it, but it's the same thing. I just have a bunch of notes and stuff in it. Um, in chapter 10 here, if you go all the way back, you'll read about silver nitrate bath maintenance, light maintenance, regular maintenance, that's kind of what we're doing today. And then heavy maintenance. And then I talk about um, your different um, strengths of collodion versus the pH and, and content of the silver bath. But exciting the bath is, uh, is uh, let's see where it's on page, let's see here. I don't know exactly what page it's on. Uh, neutralizing, so it is on. Um, modifying, um, 
Excited. Oh, oh, sorry. It's not in chapter 10. My apologies. It's in making chemistry. And making chemistry is on... I really know my book, right? It's kind of funny. Uh, and they're in order, the steps. Silver bath, right here. Um, specific gravity I talk about on page 53. 54 I talk about pH. And... Um, I talk about the exciting your bath on page 52, I guess. 52 and 53. Uh, iodizing your bath or exciting your bath. I'll just read it to you if you don't have a book. This needs to be done before you begin to use the bath. Simply flow a plate with salted collodion. Use old red collodion if you have it. It's better. It you know, charges faster. If not, use new collodion. It's fine. And put it in the bath overnight. This will charge or iodize the bath and make sure it's ready for use. Um, the, plates, the plate releases iodides into the bath. In other words, it saturates the bath with silver iodide. Um, actually, it's, it, it saturates the bath with iodides, period. It turns into silver iodide, I should say. Uh, soluble silver iodide uh, is needed to convert the silver nitrate into insoluble halides. You can also add some potassium or ammonium iodide to the bath to iodize it. I prefer the plate method, and I do. I prefer just to the standard old put it, put a uh, flow a plate, and I recommend you do a glass plate rather than an aluminum plate or a tin type, just for the simple fact the glass um, won't is inert to the silver bath. It won't if it's clean, and it you know you know how to clean plates. Um, if it's clean and you flow it with um, collodion. You put it in your bath, there won't be anything in this, there shouldn't be. So over iodizing your bath excites it and prepares it so it doesn't steal from the plate, your first plate, the real plate that you make, the photograph, it won't steal from that plate to saturate the bath. That, that's what will happen. They'll be white and flat and they'll look nasty. So um, iodize your bath. That's the only other thing that has to happen to this and um, we're, we're finished with that. So I'm going to cut away just for a second and I'll come back and we'll uh, set up and we'll do the other maintenance here. Do, 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 do. Bath number three is the new bath. Okay, welcome back. Um, we're ready to do this here. So let's check these off. We sun and uh, our UV for several hours. Enough to where you see a lot of content or, um, contaminants and crap coming out of the bath. You can see it there. And then we're going to filter now. Filtering is hugely important. Um, this is where you can use a variety of different um, products to do this. There are these square pads that work really nice. I like the uh, these cotton rounds. These are really nice too. These are a little less fuzzy, the square ones. These work great though too. I'm going to actually take our same graduate dedicated to silver bath. I'll put the two square ones in there for now. I'm gonna raise this up. This is bath number two we'll do first, I guess. It doesn't really matter. Uh, 
and just I hope you can get a visual on this let me see if I can do this here you see the pad perfectly white and clean well watch after this a sunning your silver bath you'll see why it's so critically important These clear bottles keep me honest too. I mean, you know, I do keep it in a big blue cooler and I'm on the road, you know, now doing my photographs a lot. So um, I keep it pretty much sealed up. Dark and cool, dark and cool. That's, I'm always saying dark and cool, dark and cool. There's 700 mils in there. Be patient. Turn some music on. Get your favorite beverage out. Um, find something to concentrate on while you're doing this. Just be patient. Okay, so while that's filtering out, this bottle is filthy. It's been out in the sun. It's had that dirty silver nitrate in it. I'm going to take the same cotton squares I'm going to stuff a few down in there. I'm going to grab my distilled water. Just dump a little distilled water in there. You don't need much. You got an itch on my lip here I can't get. Cap your bottle. Run those run those cotton balls or cotton squares around and clean that bottle off out. This is critically important. Sometimes they're worse than others, depending on how long it's been since you've done regular maintenance. Light maintenance. I'll show you this, though. Well, that's not too bad. It was looking pretty nasty in there, though. Pretty bad. One more little rinse here, just to get any any of the remainder out. Beautiful. Nice clean bottle. You can even clean the outside if you're so inclined to be. I don't really I'll squeeze a little bit of this out, but I don't like to squeeze a whole lot out because I'll show you why. There you go. Definitely some more filtering to do on that, right? So, pull your silver out, gently set it over there. I'm just going to take one paper towel, clean this off a little bit. I'm kind of anal about it, but it produces really nice photographs for me so I found this methodology just works wonderfully bottles clean funnels clean I'm gonna lower this down just a little bit because we're going back into the bottle another couple squares in there I use two at a time maybe for the first ones square them up This time it shouldn't be so bad. So there's, um, like I said, there's some controversy about boiling versus sunning. Um, and I'll reiterate what I just said a little while ago, a minute ago. I recommend sunning or using a UV bank of whites to do this. Um, it's important that you do it, and if you do, I don't know. I, I, I just I just can't recommend boiling. But if you have problems, you know, wait until you have some sun, or like I said, build a UV bank white or or whatever. Um, I would hate to have something terrible happen in the world of wet plate collodion because. 
of an explosion. That was the number one cause of death in the 19th century in photography too, were explosions. And it's not all ether or collodion based explosions either, so. And again here, we're even getting, we're even letting this silver nitrate breathe by just doing this too, so. And I noticed we're at about 900 mils on this. So we lost about 100 mils through the process, probably the workshop and, you know, this, that, or the other, whatever. Uh, all right, I think we're, we're there. Uh, let's go one more. And that's kind of where we're at right now. Let's go one more. And this time I'm just going to use one pad for this final, final filtering. And then we're going to check. This will go fast. I won't cut away on this one. And then we're going to check the pH. And actually, we can check the pH right now. So let's do a little multitasking here to speed up the process. Probably you're probably getting bored now, so. So I'm just going to let this sit in here for just a second. Fill it up again. I'm just keeping this pH strip kind of immersed in the silver nitrate for a minute. Get an accurate reading. Okay, I think I can even wipe this off, actually. Oh. Just a little bit here. So the pH on that, let's do another reading because I'm not convinced that we're finished filtering. I guess, yeah, we are. Kind of a shadow on that. Again, it's a slow process. Just take your time. Don't get in a rush. So, let's see what we have here. I'm just going to hold it down in there for a little bit, guys. Make sure you give it ample time for a good reading. Some of these, like I said, can take up to five minutes. So... Cap this back off when I have my other hand to use. So don't just dip it in and pull it out. I mean, some of them won't work that way, but usually you have to wait a little bit. So be patient. You heard me say that already enough. So let's see what we have here. Wow. Can you see this? I'm going to try it. pH 4. I don't know what it is, but I, I tend to stay right in that area. Always. Sometimes pH 3, but typically pH 4. All right. Um, need to clean the bottle, right? Or we cleaned the bottle. Yeah, we cleaned this bottle, sorry. We've cleaned the bottle. We checked the specific gravity. Now we need, or the pH. Now we need to check the specific gravity. See where we're at here. Okay, there's two. There's two. Um, ways you can do this. Boy, that is right on perfectly nine percent. So, but I am at 875 milliliters, and I do want to bring it up um, to 1,000. So what I'm going to do, and I know you guys are going to hate me for this, but this is what I do. For, you know, a couple hundred mils of, you know, 125 mils of silver nitrate, I'm going to dump six or seven grams into the bottle 
of silver nitrite. And I'm gonna add about 200 mils here. And right, well, 125 mils, let's, let's make it. Okay, so that, what, what I'm doing here, that'll freshen up our bath for one thing. Number two, it'll bring it up to capacity because I want a full liter in here. And number three, I think um, I think we'll be pretty dang close with this. So this kind of mixes as it goes in. Bubbles will only hang around for a minute. Wow! And look at that, spot on, one liter. Well, actually, we want that. Now, let's check. Actually, I don't need this funnel. Now, let's check specific gravity at the one, full one liter. So this is, this is how I do it. Your mileage may vary, as they say. You can do it many, many different ways. You can sit down, precisely measure out, you know, grams per 100 mils whatever you want to do. I just need to get rid of these bubbles. So I'm going to pop them. There we go. So my 9% is right there. Let's see where I'm at. <laughs> I'm just a tad over 9%, but that's, that's good. I'm actually probably right at 9%. Perfect. Can it's like cooking, you know? A little bit here, a little bit there. No big deal. That's a good bath. We filtered it. We sunned it. Filtered it. Checked the pH, the specific gravity. It is ready for use. So just in good measure. I'm gonna take one more square pad and for its last and final entry back into the its home, its bottle. I'm going to filter one more time. Works great though. If you do this, I can almost guarantee you're going to have great results. Silver bath is a, is a big culprit a lot of times in problems with uh, the process. Not always, but a lot. I generally refer if your collodion's if your collodion's good and your excuse me your developer's good. Uh, you have a lot of latitude in the developer. Um, the only thing left, and it's finicky, is the fit or is the silver bath. So that's why it's kind of a kind of problematic sometimes, and it's good. To maintain so here's my one liter line here indentation just past 900 come on up come on up there we go and I will give that one a pinch here have a garbage can close by you and plenty of paper towels and what I do afterward is I just clean my stuff out not with any water or anything like that just just, you know, paper towel and clean paper towel. Clean that out. I'll clean the top of my bottle off here. Cap it off. There you go. Beautiful bottle of fresh, maintained silver nitrate bath. So, recapping. We sunned it, filtered it, cleaned the bottle, checked the pH and the specific gravity. pH here was about four, specific gravity was 9%. We're all good to go. And that's kind of where you want to run with that. So um, that's really what I had for you today. And I hope you got something out of it. You want to, if you have any questions or if you want to, you want me to, um, go a little more in depth with something or you have 
you didn't understand a part of the process or part of the the maintenance here, let me know. I'm happy to answer those questions. But for right now, that's kind of what you need to know. This is after, it's kind of one step ahead, but this is kind of after you've been working and using. But the first bottle, you know, this Darkroom 3 bottle, that's just fresh silver nitrate. Again, it needs to be excited, but um, that's your first initial mix. Uh, I think it was Taller that said silver nitrate is the easiest of all the chemicals to make and the most difficult to maintain. And that's very true. So keep that in mind. If you have any questions, comments, let me know. Ask them down in the, in the section here. And um, I'll see you next week with, a, with another video. Thank you.